man. Welcome, everyone, uh, to uh, a brand new series of Acoustic Paradiso on Anderson's TV. After many months of searching, uh, we have found our new acoustic guitar presenter, Ben. Everybody, say hello to Ben. Hello, um, everyone. <laughs> and yes, now hopefully you will see a new acoustic show every single week on Anderson's TV, uh, presented by Ben and maybe me or maybe Pete or someone. Um, so what have we decided to throw you in with for your first ever video then, Ben? You're getting me started with a classic, the J45, the Gibson Workhorse. Beautiful. Um, yeah, it's, you know, this is the standard model, which has been pretty much the same, or well, you know, thereabouts the same since 1942 when they brought it out as competition to the Martin Dreadnoughts, really. They didn't have anything that did the same kind of canon because they, they were they were uh, either much bigger or much smaller weren't they so you had super yeah. like j200 or like double o kind of models yeah and you had kind of the earlier early 20th century kind of arch top slash flat top things um but yeah this this came out i think martin started making dreadnoughts about 10 years before this right and stealing all their business I think. so <laughs> <laughs> so they came out they came out with this which um was was an instant hit it's a beautiful looking guitar yeah i love the why it's called a j45 it was 45 bucks <laughs> i know <laughs> that's inflation for you yeah it um, came out after the j43 which was 43 dollars and before the j50 which was 50 dollars <laughs> 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 which actually bizarrely again makes you realize just how expensive something like a super 400 would have been or, or a 335 or something yeah. you know you think i know that was later but anyway but yeah so uh, Ben's going to give us some of the detail behind uh, J45 and right now from uh, the American series of acoustic guitars there are uh, we've got four J45 variants um, starting with the studio which will be the most affordable one the standard which as Ben said kind of is trying to sort of uh, keep as traditional as possible yeah. the deluxe which is rather wonderful uh, there is also, which we don't have, if you're if you're really into something that's as authentic as possible to a to an original J45, mm. there is what are called like a true vintage version as well, which is um, would be even more expensive than any of these, um, or uh, the avant garde, uh, the the sort of the sort of slightly modern revised twist on a J45, which we'll come to um, a little bit later. So, where do you want to start? Uh, I mean, this, as the standard model, this has got the, sta the kind of classic wood combination, spruce top, mahogany back and sides, mahogany neck, um, it's a rosewood fingerboard, 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, well, they, I mean, they're all the same scale, Yeah. Um, as opposed to the Martin, which is 25 and a quarter, right, or 25 and a half, um, it's, a, it's a great guitar, it's been played by everyone, you know, uh, kind of recently, Bob Dylan, John Lennon, all those guys, James Blunt even. But back in the day, it was uh, you know Reverend Gary Davis, Skip James, all those kind of old blues guys played them, and loads of country musicians as well. Right. It's you know it does it'll do most things I think. Well, let, let's go. I mean, let's let's hear some okay. some you know different stylistically. What what do you what does your mind immediate, immediately go? I want to play. It this makes me style. kind of it. It makes me want to play kind of ragtime stuff. You know that. Like, The huge, uh, it's just, it's a massive sounding guitar. I I really like it. It's really, uh, I, I like the short scale guitars. That's kind of a Let's thing, talk though. about that. Cause it's um, obviously a something that goes right through the Gibson range, whether yeah. they're making electrics or acoustics, or even mm. bass guitars, you know, they traditionally are a slightly shorter scale length than the competition. Yeah. Um, what, what does that uh, do both tonally and from a feel perspective? Say if, say if we were going to go and get a D18 or a D28 yeah. by Martin, not a radically different shaped guitar, no. but with that slightly longer scale length. What 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 happens? I think the main thing is the string tension. When mm -hmm. you, when you've got a longer scale length, you've got higher string tension, which sometimes is great because you get kind of you know it can be more snappy and you can mm -hmm. get a bit more top end stuff. 
depending on what kind of music you want to play and what sound yeah. you're after. I really like the shorter length because it's a bit, it's a little easier to play. Yeah. Um, but it's, it tends to be a bit warmer. Okay. I find. No, that's interesting. There's another video yeah. idea. That's it. Does uh, half an inch <clears throat> make a difference? Uh, <laughs> is the... Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, cool. Well, look, yeah. I mean, and play... Uh, yeah, I, I see that, and I, I do see, you know, John Lennon. Uh, yeah. I always thought Dylan was a, was a Martin guy, but was Dylan... I, I mean, Dylan played these... I mean, Elvis played one of these in... I think, oh. but I think he played it in one of his films, so whether he actually... Played it, played it. Give us some, some a nice big chordy so, strumming. Yeah, so if, if for strumming, it's, yeah. it's killer. So it's you know it's a huge, huge sounding guitar. Um, and it will do, you know, kind of full on singer songwriter strumming. Or if you want to take it back and kind of do the Carter style. So the more gentle stuff, it kind of, it's sweet and. Good. Will it respond to that kind of uh, more of a. Um, Sort of gentle finger picking style, if you like. Yeah, rather than... certainly. Like, you know, if you put a uh, capo on, for instance. That's lovely. So you see a lot of, you know, particularly, you know, you go to Nashville, everyone's got, everyone's got a J45. It, it's absolutely, they've nailed the ability to make an understated guitar look classy. Yeah. You know, you, you look at the J45 and you just go, there's no, there's no binding on the neck. The inlays are very simplistic. Uh, it's just got a nice burst, a yeah. very plain kind of um, yeah, the binding. binding. Um, Nothing fancy about the headstock, and yet it just looks well, the, classy. Yeah, I mean the burst, which is you know the classic finish for for you know for this model, came around because they couldn't get enough solid tops when they started making them because it was wartime, it was the Second World War. Right. So they had to put the sunburst in to cover the joints. That's <laughs> but it's amazing. so. But it, you know, it's a cool sunburst, and it's got the you know the teardrop pit guard it's you know it's a classic i like it well look so that's the standard model and yep. i think we we mentioned before if we didn't mention it it's a spruce top with a mahogany back and yep. side all solid yep. yeah so yep. no use of laminate uh, woods on this kind of range of guitars um nitrocellulose finishing process Ac yeah, across the range so again all that very um very thin lacquers so really allowing the wood to kind of uh resonate and move as much as possible um, but again, adds quite a premium to the price because it's quite a painstaking and yeah. time-consuming process to, to, to work with those kind of finishes. Um, tell me about the, the dovetail neck join as well, because that's a real kind of critical part. Yeah, and the I, they've all got the same. They've all got the same dovetail joint, and it's one of the reasons that you. It's harder to mass produce something with that kind of build because it needs to be so precise. Yeah, and you need to have someone there who's actually fitting it for each one rather than yeah. you know doing it in kind of with using some more modern manufacturing techniques yeah i mean i certainly know you know if you take you know the fender strat for example you know it's yeah. the ultimate kind of idea of one machine can just churn bodies out another can just churn necks out and then anybody just gets anybody in any neck and goes boom and to a certain extent Although I've underplayed it, but you know, brands like Taylor, for example, where they're sort yeah. of laser cutting and it is a sort of, it's more that kind of idea that, you know, when bodies and necks are built, you should just be able to bolt yeah. one onto another. And this, anything dovetail, it's like just because, you know, the pocket and the neck join will never, ever, ever be a zillion million percent right so the lunia <clears throat> at the final time is literally just going oh, just, you know, just shave a bit here and, just... <laughs> um, <clears throat> and that's why again i think these just take a long time to make you know and obviously yeah. anyway look so that's the, the standard model that's it and it's got the it's got the lr bags um element pickup with the vtc um kind of Ooh. controls it's got volume and tone tucked away the sound hole there let's do a quickie turn the volume all the way okay. down strum in the microphone okay so this is mm. 
No pickup. I'll turn and the pickup up. A little bit of pickup, yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So you're. That's a pretty good job. For all of the the electro elements of this video, you're hearing the DI output from a, an AER Compact 60 with everything flat, the the preamp color and the EQ and everything just all switched off and just it straight out. Yeah. Okay, so let's, for someone working to a slightly uh, more reasonable budget, although well, let's be honest with you, these mm. are all American, so nothing here is, um, what's yeah. the right word? Nothing is cheap, basically, <laughs> is what we're saying. Uh, but this would be the most affordable one in the range. We've got the J45 Studio model, which sounds like this. Yeah, it's a great guitar. There's a there's a few differences okay. between this and the standard. The most noticeable one is probably the woods, the back and side on this, and the fingerboard or walnut. Okay, um, which is you know less traditional, but yeah. it's being used in a lot more guitars now. Um, it's a slightly thinner body. It's not quite as deep as this, which does mean you don't get quite the bass response you do out of the standard one. Yeah. Actually, you know what, we should just, let's just show that side on. It's, yeah. It's, it's not, it's quite it's noticeable down at the yeah. bottom. I think it's got to be nearly, it's got to be like three quarters of an inch or something, isn't it? Getting so, on for that, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's got, a, it's got the advanced response neck profile, which is... So slightly flatter radius, I think. Yeah, I think uh, so. Um, cool. It's comfortable. I mean, I find that one comfortable too, but, you know, neck, neck profile is such a yeah. personal taste thing. It's, I mean, it's a great, it's a great guitar. It, as I say, it... It doesn't have the bass, but sometimes you don't. Want it's the one bass. of those. It's quite a lot cheaper, isn't it? It's like it's like th like three quarters of the price, isn't it? Yeah. And yet you look at it and go, "There's not a great deal." I mean, sometimes when you're looking at sort of the studio version of the standard version, yeah. you're talking about, "Oh, it doesn't have the binding, and the inlays are plainer, and the colours yeah. aren't as nice." And, you know. But you're looking at this really going, "Well, apart from it being slightly shallower body depth." and a different choice of wood, not even necessarily a cheaper choice of wood, just a different choice of yeah, wood. That's it stacks up as good value. Um, let, let's again, let's just try some, maybe really challenge it with, see if that bass response feels like it's just different or okay. not there. Yeah, you know, what, what, what are we? If I lay into some chords, yeah. just, you know. great i i wouldn't be surprised if you were in a band rather than a solo artist yeah. i think you'd eq all the bass out that you particularly on stage. you'd almost want it to be more that yeah. on your own i think just yeah in your own i like the extra bass end of, of the standard yeah, but totally. um but as a working again as a working electroacoustic for a musician i think for, particularly for gigging and stuff yeah like you say you're going to lose a lot of that bass mm. to stop feedback i mean i let me try it with the capo just to see if it makes much of a difference up the neck, but I think it's it's different rather than any kind of better or worse. Yeah. It, it I mean, didn't what? sound quite as sparkly either. It's not. It's almost like it's just had the extremes of the EQ just sort of. Yeah, squidged out of it, and that might be to do with you know with the wood and and and, and the choices there. But again, I think it's a it's probably a taste thing rather mm. than you know necessarily. Yeah. You know, if if I didn't know that there was a difference in price, I'd think it was just you know variations on a model Agreed. around the same. There's no yeah. So it's still it's still uh, nitrous alios finished, still dovetail neck joint, yeah. still comes with the hard case, which I'll show you at the end. But all these yeah. guitars come with a nice hard case. Still made in America, out the same factory. Yep, yeah, same pickup. Yeah. Um, well, it's... there you go. So that's the studio. Yeah, same bracing as well. It's you know they're they're all all of these have got the X bracing, so it's. 
Hey, there it's we a great are. guitar. Well, look, <laughs> let's go the other way now. So let's okay. go deluxe. Um, do you want me to hold that a if second? That's not right, sorry. And then, um, and this was the other. Now, now instead of trying to uh, justify why one guitar is cheaper than another, we shall try and justify why this one's <laughs> more expensive. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, visually, it's obviously more expensive. <laughs> it's it's obviously more expensive everywhere. The but the the inlay work on this is 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 quite That's something. Spectacular. On the back as well. Oh. It's kind of got this. I love this. This is almost like a sort of a native sort of, you know, American Indian kind of uh, yeah, it's, all those beautiful colours and 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 yeah, the, the kind of the marquetry work on it is, is, is yeah. really Let's give it a really give it a, nice. give okay. it a strum or do we... So I did again, I'll stick with that bluesy stuff for, yeah. for now. It's <clears throat> for me, yeah. It's doing what you know. You, well, you, spec wise, do you want to just go over yeah. sort of timbers okay. and specs and? So again, it's a spruce top. This one's got rosewood back and sides. So uh, you know, classic, classic wood combination. Um, the neck on it is mahogany again. Um, the fingerboard on this is actually rich light. Yeah, we we, we talked about that a bit um, before, didn't we? More and yeah. more. You know, this is a rich light gets a bad rep, I think, for pe people make an assumption that that guitar manufacturers use a composite on the fretboard because it's cheaper or something than ebony. But honestly, every guitar manufacturer that I've ever spoken to thinks rich light is a brilliant uh, material to make fretboards from, and it's actually more expensive than ebony. <laughs> so it's, it's it's definitely not just somebody uh, yeah. just going, how can I save you know five bucks on a guitar? And in terms um, of appearance, you, well, we had to look it up to check whether yes. it was ebony or, or ridge light. It's, it's well, because it's got a very fine texture yeah. to it that looks like wood. <laughs> yeah, and it's got these, anyway. these fantastic inlays, which are, uh, are they've, they're kind of outlined in brass or whatever. It's they're, beautiful, it's, isn't it's it? You've got like the, yeah, the pearl inlay with some sort of gold or brass or whatever outline to yeah, it. Yeah. It's so beautifully done. Yeah, um, it certainly brings fabulous, the... Fabulous, uh, you know, binding. And, it's it's pretty. Oh, it's got, always got all the bling, which is great. However, yes, I always think when manufacturers <clears throat> start with a shape and a timber combination mm. that becomes classic, yeah, and then they do like deluxe or studio, or whatever, and they change that. I don't necessarily always think that it ends up being better. Um, there's something about the standard yeah you know mahogany back and sides spruce top as soon as you put the rosewood on the, the base enhances mm. but you lose i think some of that mid-range sort of definition definitely um and i love this mm. and i love the sound of it but it doesn't quite sound like how i think a j45 sounds if you know what i mean yeah. it's like, it's a it's a beautiful guitar and it's a beautiful sounding guitar um Maybe you just it's, play that different okay. in the sense of I think it just would lend itself to a different I vibe. Think, yeah, know? I think so. And it's, you know, it still works. It sounds kind of more hi-fi in yeah. a way than, than the J45 standard model. And I guess, you know, it's, it's down, to, it's must be down to the woods more than anything. Because yeah. apart from that, it's, and the, you know, the prettiness aspect it's the same well let, let's get let's do like a you know finger style with the capo like, like yeah. you've done with okay. the others just some different kind so of kind playing. of some yeah <laughs> Still got plenty of poke, yeah. Hasn't but it's it? it's it's a different, the kind of bass responds a bit differently, which I think is the, again down to the rosewood rather than mahogany. But yeah. if you take it up the neck again and do some finger picking stuff, it's a sweet, it's it's a really. Um... You know, you could 
sink into that. It sounds great. I mean, vi visually, <laughs> visually, it's just a beautiful. There's no two ways about it. It's just oh man, yeah, a beautiful looking thing. And there's yeah, like the the detail in the binding and things is really. I hadn't even noticed yeah. how many different colours of wood there are in there. It's a can lot. we can we again t roll the, the pickup down so we yeah, can yeah, just absolutely. hear it purely. So this is purely acoustic. Mm. It's a thing, a, a thing that I find with a lot of guitars with rosewood sides rather than mahogany, is you get a lot more projection out the front than you do, you know, with a mahogany with a mahogany back and sides on an acoustic, I tend to find it feels more like the sound kind of radiates out okay. from more of it. Where with the rosewood, I think it projects hugely out the front. I liked um, your hi-fi analogy. Yeah. It almost does sound like, if you're the sort of person that puts music on and they go, oh, I just have a bit more treble, a bit more bass, and I just take a bit of that mid-range yeah. out, because it, it makes it, it's perhaps less in your face. Yeah, uh, I get that, but I'm not sure when it. You know, depends what you want to buy an acoustic for. I think if the idea is to 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 play with other musicians and be mm. heard, I think the yeah. way they designed them originally was was uh, probably still the best. Anyway, but yeah, that's it's, the deluxe. It's gorgeous. It I is. I sound like uh, Craig Revel Hall there from Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. <laughs> gorgeous, darling. Um, oh, it's got gold tuners as well. It's just got everything. It's actually got. I like the fact it's got the old logo. You see, they've, they've oh, used the, yeah. uh, the, the vintage style yeah. logo on it. It's really cool. And the little um, motif on here, which they'll often put on things like custom guitars, just to sort of, you know, show that it's posh, basically. All right. Cool. Uh, one more. Now, this is the newest. All right. Avant-garde. Avant-garde model. Yeah. Um, me, yes, avant-garde, meaning. I think it's French, right? Avant-garde? Yes. Meaning new and experimental. Different. Um, Different. Pretty. So, four or five years ago, uh, Gibson used the uh, naming convention of high performance on a lot of their instruments to kind of just change things. Some brands call it like player series. Yeah. So, you know, when someone says, I really like this guitar from the 1950s, but it just needs like a wider neck or a flatter radius or a something, something, something to make yeah. it more modern. So, that's where this came from. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I always thought the high performance naming thing was like, never really felt like a word you should use to describe a guitar. So avant-garde, <laughs> I think, is a very clever piece of um, naming from Gibson because it sort of sounds a bit more old-fashioned, but yeah. modern. Uh, and anyway. it kind of, it, it, it's, I, well, should I play it? And then yes. We, yeah, okay, so we'll play something and then... Uh... sounds like a guitar yeah I mean it's it's kind of, I guess they've kind of updated certain things um, it feels it, it's kind of it feels kind of like a guitar that an electric player might feel more comfortable on than some of the more traditional acoustic guitars it's still got a fairly kind of big neck but this is the advanced response neck again yeah slightly flatter um, fretboard radius this has got a maple neck the rest are all oh, okay. necks. this is a two-piece maple neck um, do they leave Which that is, natural, or do they stain it no, so you can't no, really you, tell? No, no, you can't oh. tell. It's got a kind of skunk oh, right I see. The back. Yeah, it's, it is. It's that again. I wonder if that's just it's just trying to get that rigidity and that sort of that sense that you know it just yeah. won't move no matter where you sort of you know take it and tore it. And that's that it. And it's got, it's got a thinner body. Yes. Um, not well, actually, no. It's it's thinner than the studio. I think. Thinner again. Yeah, I think so. Let's have a little. Uh, let's go old scientific and just hold the two up side by side. I think it is. Let's do let's do it this way on. Okay. Oh, it's marginal. It's mar like it's another couple of millimetres slimmer again. But it's, okay, That's another video. Yeah. Just two millimetres make a difference. <laughs> um, um, and obviously it's got the cutaway, which I know... It's got a bit missing. It will divide opinion amongst J45 fans. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great guitar. Yeah. I wouldn't... Shall I, shall I I'll turn the volume down and see what it sounds yeah, like? Yeah, sure. Still sounds great. 
to my ears, it doesn't do the same thing that this does. What, one would assume that they are, with the uh, cutaway on here, they're aiming for the person that's predominantly going to plug this in, right? Yeah, I would, um, I would say so. It's so weird as soon as you put a cutaway on an acoustic guitar. As in, I, I find, I think that the J45 is so immediately recognisable. Yeah. And then the minute you put a cutaway on it, it just looks like every other Dreadnought cutaway acoustic I think, guitar that there is. I think, weird, I think so, because you can't, yeah, on its own, that shoulder doesn't really look too different to, yeah. you know, Martin or something. But this one doesn't have a tone control either on the pickup. It's just got a volume oh, control. Just, just straight volume. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's very pretty still looking though, isn't it? And, and it's, it's, it's yeah. one of the more affordable ones. So it's uh, a, more in line with the kind of dough that you'd pay for a studio, a tiny bit more. Yeah, and it's, um, it's like the studio, it's got a walnut back and sides too. Spruce top still. But, yeah, um, and it, although on that walnut point, uh, the avant-garde model is available with um, walnut, yeah. rosewood or mahogany. And they're all within a couple of hundred pounds of each other. Mm. Um, actually, we should also say as well, these are all available in left-handed as well. I know all the left-handed players often feel short-changed, but um, they're all available too. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Or, you know, I it's mean, really feel-wise, isn't it? It's, it's just, yeah, it's... It's strange. It, it feels like a very different guitar to the old-fashioned one, but you know, that's in again, a good way or a bad way or just a different well in way. a different way. That's the thing. <laughs> I mean, for for me, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. And I I really like that, but yeah. I would happily play this too. You know, yeah. it's, it's a great sounding. Mm -hmm. Let me put the cap on it again. Sure. But I think this is really. I think this is designed for, like you say, kind of the modern performing guitarist. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. I think that reduced body size again on, on an electroacoustic is is um, an intentional benefit as well. I think you know yeah. if you're going to be plugged into a PA system, all that extra a uh, bass end is largely unwanted, and it's just going to cause feedback issues and all. You know, it's just yeah. even just the the way the thing will sit against your body. I suspect the slimmer body, if you're standing up and playing, will feel more comfortable. I think so, and I think you know there there are differences between all of the ones in the range, mm -hmm. but they still have they still feel like workhorse guitars you know they you could do you could do most stuff that you'd want to do on an acoustic on any of them really but yeah it comes down to personal personal preference um well i like them all i particularly like having you on the show because it means <laughs> i don't have to play anything and you're good on the well, acoustic guitar thank you. so let's just do as a as a um a final segment let's do like 20 seconds of the same style playing on each guitar uh, for you guys to just listen to and go, oh, that was my favourite. And you can comment below about what one you like the best. Um, and please, as well as this is Ben's first video, shout some ideas out for videos you'd like us to try and cover. We'll be doing, as I said, this will come out once a week now, hopefully, the new acoustic show. Um, and we'll cover all sorts of things from reviews of, of different models to techniques about how to use acoustic guitars. Um, we'll be doing cheap stuff, expensive stuff, shootouts, yeah. all the stuff that, uh, you know, you see on the electric guitar side of things, but now with acoustics, so. That's it, and if I make any mistakes in the history, do let me know, <laughs> which I will. <laughs> so let's start with, um, let's go in price order. Okay. So start with the studio. All right. 